Good day, I'm Tamara McHale and this is your JIS News for Monday, November 2. Public sector workers are to receive outstanding money from a health sector modernization exercise this month and in January 2016. That's one of the claims agreed to by nurses and the government at the signing of a wage contract for the 2015-2017 period. Nurses will also be receiving several other benefits, including 20 acres of land for housing, scholarships for training and education, a bus and increases in uniform allowances. Like other public sector workers, the nurses will receive a 7% increase in salaries over the contract period with 4% in year 1 and 3% in year 2. At Friday's signing, Prime Minister Portia Simpson-Miller and Finance Minister Dr. Peter Phillips thanked the nurses for their understanding and acceptance of the wage agreement despite the challenges they face. We appreciate the human sacrifice that our nurses give daily in order to provide world-class service to the nation and therefore regret that we are not able to afford to give all that is being requested and th that you so truly deserve. As the resources available increase, we are committed to share that increase with the public sector workers of Jamaica. And we will pay what we can. And when we say we can, it is the truth. And when we say we can't, it is the truth. Government has partnered with the private sector to deliver a green housing development in St. Catherine. Ground was broken for the Green Village Housing Development on the weekend. It's being developed by Green Village Country Club Development Limited with funding support from the National Housing Trust. The scheme will deliver 114 mixed housing units, including 48 two-bedroom single-family homes, 24 two-bedroom apartments, and 42 studio apartments. The gated community will also offer amenities such as a clubhouse, common swimming pool, playground, barbecue area, and 24-hour security. During the groundbreaking and tour of the model unit, Housing Minister Dr. Maurice Guy said he was particularly pleased that the development's sustainable green features were in line with government's goal for the use of more renewable energy sources. The fact that we are utilizing this technology in terms of the, the type of concrete that is being used, one, two, the fact that we are going to be recycling our water, three, um, utilizing that for um, watering the green areas, as well as having possibility of expansion and utilizing photovoltaics to generate energy, and also having um, street lights um, powered by solar power is a plus. This, this, is, this is what we need in this country. Work on phase one of the development begins this week with the clearing of the land. Even as he welcomed this project, Minister Guy challenged Green Village and other private sector developers to explore more lower-income housing developments to meet that national demand. The Anato Bay Hospital in St. Mary is expected to save $1.8 million on its annual electricity bills following the recent installation of energy-efficient air conditioning units. The new units were installed in the hospital's operating theatre suites and its accident and emergency ward. The work was carried out by the Petroleum Corporation of Jamaica at a cost of $12 million. It's part of the government's Energy Efficiency and Conservation Program, which is designed to reduce the public sector energy bill. Under the program, we are spending, listen to this, 20 million US dollars over four years to yield savings of 3.2 billion Jamaican dollars. Over the last 10 years, the Petroleum Corporation of Jamaica has invested approximately $163 million on energy efficiency projects at hospitals, clinics and health centres across the island. Government will be expanding its capacity development programme with the training of at least 500 public procurement officers over the next three years. Senior Procurement Analyst in the Finance and Planning Ministry, Melissa McGee, told a recent GIS think tank that this would build on the training of 400 government procurement practitioners that took place over the past year. They are being trained and certified as part of a thrust to streamline and transform the public procurement system. Senior Director in the Procurement and Asset Policy Unit, Cecile Mirage, says the plan is to develop a sustained program of training that will enable a new way of thinking regarding public procurement. It requires an analytical thinking. It requires market research. So we have to have persons undertaking this function who understands that public procurement is in fact a profession and it should be treated as such. 
The program is expected to be implemented by the third quarter of the 2016-2017 financial year. And finally, 30 residents of Cambridge and surrounding areas in southern St. James have been trained and certified as fire wardens. The community volunteers successfully completed a course in the proper management of fires and will serve as the first line of defense against any occurrence of fire until firefighters arrive on the scene. Senior Deputy Superintendent of the Jamaica Fire Brigade, Emilia Ibanks, says the program should help the new fire wardens build a culture of fire safety in their respective areas. What this kind of program does for you is that it gives you a first-hand knowledge. It equips you with the knowledge to be able to assist yourself should the need arise. The training is conducted by the Jamaica Fire Brigade under the Fire Safety Awareness Project, which aims to train and certify citizens from five communities in St. James. The project is funded by the Spanish Jamaica Foundation, which has also made donations of fire safety equipment. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Tamara McHale. Thanks for watching.